Hey there folks, today I am going to try the Bee Paper Company watercolor paper. This is the stuff that you can get 50 pages, 6x9, for about $15 on Amazon. And it's supposed to be 100% cotton, which you can't really get 100% cotton watercolor paper for that cheap. So let's, let's open this up and paint something, yeah? So I'm going to open it up this and I might be scoring the paper I touched it a little bit with the scissors so let's just use this as our practice piece and it is square that that's important <laughs> okay I hate it when I get a uh, paper that isn't square which has happened to me um, so I'm going to tape it down I decided to tape it down because Buckling does not bother me. I'm not going to judge it if it buckles because it's 140 pound paper. It's going to buckle pretty much no matter what. So I'm just going to tape it down so I have that nice edge. And I can do some really wet into wet stuff. Let's find something to paint. I think I'm just going to go on to Pinterest and see if there's a like a picture I like. Um, this is just for practice, so I don't really see anything wrong with that. I think the original artist is Anne LaRose, and she seems to be French or some sort of language similar to French. If you want to look her up, this, this is what I'm going to try to mimic, I guess. So I put on a good amount of water. If this were a cellulose paper, like especially around here on the edges, um, like where I started, it would like um, soak in really quickly and then other parts it would pool and I would have to like do this quite a bit. It's buckling a little, a little bit and like I expected it to be, even though I taped it down, I expected it to be like, like really, and it's just, it's just like, Ooh, gentle, so that's nice. Like a, a moon or a sun or something here in the center. Not quite in the center, but kind of in the center-ish. Right there. I'm going to use some phthalo blue, and I think this is purple in here, I don't know. It's a mix, it's already on my palette. between cellulose paper and cotton paper in my experience is that it's very a lot harder to get blooms with cotton paper and I like to force the blooms that's kind of like part of my style I've lost my moon and that that's a difference in cellulose paper right there if I had pulled that moon out um, it would have been dry. Okay, what I'm looking for is kind of like a satin matte look as to the shininess, and I think I'm there. So I'm going to put some, I'm going to put some clouds or whatever, some atmosphere-ish. I'm just going to drop in some water. And I think I'm going to get some nice blooms. reference photo I'm going for here this is it's a it's flat wash but I want mine to be different and the force blooms is kind of my thing so 
that's what I'm going to do. This one has gotten quite out of control. I think I'm going to add more color. I'm going to add some blooms in the form of color. I'm going to water down my paint a little bit. Okay, a lot. Put in a few background trees. is different stages of wetness it's going the trees are going to come and go in very unexpected ways be where my scissors touched. I thought that there might be some like that. Okay. The darker the, the tree is, the more forward it's going to feel. And one thing that I like to do to make trees is to put in a bead of water on the light edge where the light hits it. And that creates like a A bark texture. It does significantly change the, the the tone, the lightness and the darkness of what you are painting. So. at the reference photo at all at this point. I'm just kind of like doing my own thing. Let's bring a nice dark tree up from the bottom. I think it needs to be a little bit darker. liking this paper quite a bit because I can still do the techniques that I do on cellulose paper with similar results. Not exactly the same, but close. When I'm doing this, I'm kind of positively painting and negatively painting because I want these to look like grasses too. So I'm like positively painting up here and negatively painting these grasses down here. It's a strange dance. in this forest full of trees. So let's fix that. Let's add some where I think it needs a little bit 
bit of disguising first. I'm going to make some leaves using like a dark, dark brown with my quill brush. I found that the quill does a really good job making irregular shapes, which is both good and bad. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Let's peel off the tape together, shall we? Okay. Oh, it got some bleeding under there, but that's probably the tape's fault. It is the second time I've used it after all. It might even be the third time. I don't really actually know. So. my first impressions of the B aqua B paper here is the label I've heard good things about this and it did not fall short it's not exactly uh, really fancy schmancy uh, cotton paper like the Fabriano Artistico which is I hear is comparable to arches I'm personally have never painted on arches I'm still kind of like working my way up <laughs> Oh, I think this is a great paper, actually. I was really impressed. So I will be using this definitely for practice for greeting cards and probably for actual paintings that I mean to sell. So um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. As always, thanks for watching. some, um, what's it called, uh, per permanent magenta, not maroon, sorry. Did I say maroon? I said it in my head. <laughs> I don't know if I said it out loud. It, I think I said purple. Uh, yeah, it's permanent magenta. I think this tree was a mistake. Maybe I should add another one. Isn't that funny? Usually, in life, you don't, you aren't supposed to repeat your mistakes, but in art, if you repeat a mistake, it looks better, often, so isn't that funny? <laughs>